Hey guys, and welcome to another video review. Now today we are looking at not a pedal, not an amp, not a guitar, but the Weber Mass Attenuator. Now what is an attenuator? Well basically, when it comes to tube amps, you generally want to get a fair bit of volume out of your amp to get it to the best tone. Now this doesn't always suit your situation. If you're in an apartment or you know you're in a small stage and stuff, getting your amp to that sweet spot may not be plausible. It might be too loud for your situation. That's where attenuators come in. Basically they're a device that sits between your amp head and your speaker box or if you're in a combo between the actual amp part and the speaker inside, and it absorbs the energy uh, from the output transformer, allowing you to get lower volumes. Now there's two main types of attenuators. The first type is a resistive attenuator, and this is basically a big resistor that takes down that power and turns it into heat. The problem with a resistive load is it doesn't change the impedance in the same way that a speaker reacting to the output transformer does. So you basically get unnatural feel and a bit of fizziness. Now the Weber is one of the first reactive uh, loads on the market. Uh, basically Weber puts, Ted Weber put in a speaker coil inside this box, uh, no cone, just the coil. And what that does is give the amp a load that feels like a speaker. Now, there's lots of features you can see on this box. It's 100% passive. So basically, all you're doing is taking away things from the tone. You're not adding anything as such because you cannot add signal with this. Now, there is things on the market which have built-in amps like the Bad Cut and Leash. And I think there's a... Uh, Cock uh, power load or something that has uh, 6L6s in it, which is basically like a power amp and an attenuator mixed together. Now this also has an output and, cool. This also has a line out output. So basically you can plug into your door and record silently or record as well or center stage or whatever you'd like other than your speaker sound. Now that opening tone I had there was actually my clean channel cranked up a lot and as you can see on the decibel meter I've got here I was only getting about 95 dB which is still loud but without this attenuator in place would be well over into the hundreds which is deafeningly loud. So what I'm going to do is dial it back to the clean tone and I'll show you the difference and I'll show you all the features. So we'll walk through the features first. I'm playing uh, this Les Paul custom copy by J and D. Um, I'm playing with my Serotone uh, Stray Cat 30. And what we've got it set on is the 30 watt mode, which is the highest watt mode uh, with the tube rectifier. So it's pretty loud and pretty punchy. So as far as the attenuator, goes, we've got several functions on this side. So if you ignore this tone stack for now, that is for the DI output, and we'll just look at these functions here. So this is your main volume. It basically controls how loud you're going into your speaker, and all the way down is close to silent. Now some sound still dumps through, but it's close to silent. Here you've got a bypass control, basically takes the attenuator out of the signal chain. Now this treble boost, it says boost, but as I said, this is a passive device. So what this basically does is basically stops attenuation of the treble frequencies. So the 16, 3 dB are different resistor values which kind of allow more treble through. And this is important as you roll down because you start to lose treble. And also got a high and low range, so this is just basically cuts the signal even more. Um, but it does affect tone, we'll go through that. Now as I said, ignore this part. This part is for the DI. So there's an output on the back of this. Uh, stock, it is usually unbalanced. 
but the, this version I picked up online has a balanced output. Now this is just on the DI, like I said, so it does not affect your speaker cabinet tone, but it basically has a bypass and then bass, middle, treble, and volume controls. Now because these are passive, all the way up is actually less signal than it off. And you just dial them down to kind of change your tone and they're highly interactive. But we'll go through that later on in the video. So first I'll play a kind of warm, clean sound. And what I'm gonna do, first off, I'm gonna show you the difference in volume. So you'll hear a huge volume drop in uh, your speakers or headphones or whatever you're listening to this video in. But then for the rest of the video, I'm gonna try and match all the levels so that you can only hear tonal differences rather than level differences. And we'll have the dB meter here showing you what the actual uh, values are. So, if I basically go back, I'm on the neck pickup clean. Now I'm going to bypass this and roll the mass all the way up. So I'm gonna go a fairly loud but clean sound. Now we're at the attenuator on full. Now I'll take the treble boost off so you can just hear how it is. Uh, so that is the attenuator at full. It's a huge volume. So you can see already on the highest setting, as in the least cut, it does cut a fair bit of signal. Uh, so that's basically, I would use that, say, if you've got it, your clean sound right, but you, you know, maybe your sound guy's like, oh, it's a bit too loud, you just put it on and you keep it on full, and you kind of take it down a few dB, more like a 15 watt or 10 watt combo would be, and then use the mics to get your tone. Uh, so, as we're on the attenuated signal, I'm just gonna turn this up to kind of what I'd call a more warm on the edge. Like. Now, if I bypass this, this is probably way too loud for this recording situation and live could be too loud. So back to the attenuated signal. Now, as I said, the treble boost doesn't really work so much as it's up high because it's a resistor in this network. But as we go down, it will come into four. So I'm just gonna wind down the speaker volume at various increments and I'll basically boost it in my door, which is Cubase, so you can really hear how it actually affects the tone. So this is at full. Take it down to about six. Take it down to about four. Down to about two. down to about one. So now we're at kind of bedroom volumes for clean. And if we bring that uh, treble boost in at 3 dB, Have some of the clarity back and 6 dB. Oh, 
I'm going to set it a bit higher and about three for most of the set. basically set to a clean sound a kind of warm clean sound giving me a little bit more of that kind of breakup but it's still a clean sound um, now I could go to the gain channel and start showing that but I want to really show what you can do with an attenuator that you couldn't do normally without blowing your ears out so this amp basically has one gauge stage in the clean that goes straight to this brilliance control into the power amp so it doesn't have cascading preamps or much gain in the preamp at all. Much like kind of old Marshalls and stuff, uh, you know, old Fenders, which kind of uh, basically have less gain stages, but it's all power amp distortion. High watts are the same. Um, now this has even less because most of those amps would have two channels and a tone stack and you need tone stack recovery plus different uh, gain stages for say normal and treble inputs. This doesn't have any of that. Um, so it is fairly clean down here. But what we're gonna do is crank it up and get kind of crunchy. Now my aim is to keep, I'll put this back on, to keep this around the 90 decibel mark and under, not blowing my ears out. So uh, let's bring it up a little bit. Bypass, this is really loud. If we put the max on here, you'll see how high it gets. So that's a 6 dB difference, which you may think Oh, it's only 6 dB, but once you get up to 100 dB, 6 dB is a lot louder. Uh, so yeah, like I said, gonna try and keep it down kind of low as we go through these crunch down tones, just about a bedroom volume. Now with most attenuators, you start going too low, you do lose a lot of the kind of sound, you lose a lot of bass and kind of dynamics. Uh, so, you don't want to go too low on the attenuation. about attenuators that I've read online is people saying stuff like, it's like a brick wall limiter on your sound. It compresses everything. You have no dynamics. Now, I think a lot of this kind of belief comes from the fact that you're pushing your output tubes to their max. They have no headroom left. Um, and various other things when you're using an attenuator that makes you think, oh, the attenuator is capping off the signal, blah, blah, blah. Now, I don't know how true this is, but we're gonna try and put some pedals to it, play with a bit of dynamics and show how it does respond and how it still can respond with dynamics. Uh, so with the pedals thing, that's another thing I've read. Useless with pedals, only use if you're overdriving your ramp, makes pedals sound awful, all that. Now, like I said, I think it's more that people are just overdriving their amps too much and run out of headroom. Or they're trying to do, you know, 70 decibels at 100 watt head, which really isn't plausible. You just want to knock off that top end of that signal. So I'm going to back down to the uh, clean about here. So we've still got... 
bit of crunch on there, um, but playing lightly, we have clean. So let's see how the dynamics go. To me, all the dynamics are there. Now, of course, you don't have that impact of dynamics because when you're running at higher decibels, without the attenuator, obviously, that change in decibel feels loud. You can change the input signal and it will change the output signal by the same amount of decibels, but it's all logarithmic. So it can seem a bit confusing, but let's say you have an input you know, your guitar's going in at a certain voltage. Now you increase what would be three decibels. Now if you're running at 80, that just goes to 83. Doesn't feel much louder. But if you're at 100, three decibels is a huge amount of increase. Now of course, you need a power amp that produces more power, but that's why we're talking 50 watt, 100 watt heads. This is only 30 watts, but it still can get about 100 watts fit, 100 dB, fairly clean. So one thing I haven't spoken about is this high-low range. Now this is probably the worst thing about the Weber. Now, why do I say that? Because it destroys the low end, and that is probably the weak point. Now, if you really need to go down there, Sure, but I just like to ride it just above one and it's quiet enough for me. So I'm going to kind of turn it up and show you what it does to the signal. So yeah, I really don't like how it sounds. Now the only time I'd use that in is I was getting no signal and turn it all the way down. Now this might respond different with a higher wattage head, I'm not sure, but with this particular head, it really doesn't work for me. But it can get a lot quieter. Okay, so what should we go through next? We're gonna go through some pedals. And I really wanna show how it doesn't really affect the pedals at all. In fact, it gives you more scope for getting certain tones you have heard on records, especially old records. Now, one of the big ones was using Marshalls with say a rat or a tube screamer and just cranking the hell out of it. And you know, Power attenuators have been used in the 70s and 80s. A lot of people would think those classic tones are either preamp gain or really loud amps. But the Boston tone from the first Boston album is Plexis through Tom Schultz's own power attenuator design. After that, he went to making, you know, solid state devices that could kind of cop that tone at bedroom volumes. 
So basically, yeah, we'll get a warm clean again. And I've got my retrosonic distortion kind of adding a bit of gain, but mainly adding a bit of level so we can get a kind of big rock tone. So. to running it very very clean and uh, bringing the attenuator up it is a quite a different tone <laughs> Obviously, there's a benefit of the power tubes kicking in there. Um, now, I'm going to go overdrive pedal first, and then we'll go to the drive channel and kind of show off what that's doing. And, you know, the scope of tones I can now get with the drive channel that I couldn't before. So I'm using the MM Silver Overdrive uh, just to give it a little bit of a boost. So what we're going to do is... Crank this up a bit. It's hitting about 90 dB. Now, this isn't adding a lot of gain. The MM Silver, it's not adding a lot of gain. It's mainly adding volume and just kind of giving it a bit more sustain. Oh, 
you can hear with an attenuator, your clean channel suddenly becomes a multitude of different tones. I mean, that's just a little overdrive. It's not really adding a lot. If I go all the way clean, you can really hear what that's doing. So it's not really adding tons of gain. We'll have to get nice, sustainy, huge sounding leads with this cranked up because that power section is cooking. Uh, so let's talk about cooking power sections. Let's go to the gain channel. Okay, so now we've moved on to the gain channel. Now the gain channel differs greatly from the clean channel in this amp because it has cascading preamp stages. But this doesn't mean an attenuator is useless. What it means, it gives you more tones because I can get that kind of preamp saturation or I can dial that back and get more power amp saturation. So basically, I've got this fairly dialed back. We're at fairly clean setting. We've got nine o'clock, nine o'clock, nine o'clock. So these basically control the front gain. Then we've got this at nine o'clock. So if I wanted a crunch sound, this is normally what I'd have it on. <laughs> So let's dial back the attenuator and dial up the master. mid-range and kind of some of the compression and having the gain down low allows me to you know clean up with my volume control and some smooth kind of clean blues tones Now, the level control is basically after the first few gain stages. So it doesn't have that more modern sound. It has a more vintage kind of tone. So if I bring that up, I'm really pushing the power section down. And like I said, uh, the treble boost works good when it's down low, so let's see what it does here. Cool. So that's kind of your more power amp thing. But what about your more modern preamp game? So we're gonna put the edge up a bit, level down. So that's what I'd have it set on if I was playing live because 
any higher volume than that and I'd be too loud on this channel. But with the attenuator, I can crank that. So basically, you have more compression, a bit of the smoothing of the highs as that power section gets cooking. Now, you do lose some of the tightness. So sometimes you don't want the power amp cooking. You do want that kind of clean headroom. And obviously, you keep the master low and crank up here. Now, it's a bit of an experiment. Let's just go all crazy. I'm going to put a boost pedal on. I'm going to uh, put the level up a bit and crank the master. So basically, that just opens up that channel and I can get a lot more kind of sounds out of it with the uh, attenuator in. Now let's move to the last section, which is this tone stack and the DI output. So I'm going to turn this all the way down into the low range and you'll hear not really getting any signal because the master's down. Not really getting any signal. Uh, so before we do go to that, I will show you the lower setting this has. And basically, I'll um, show it through this mic I have here, which is picking up my voice. And I'll talk and show you just, you know, how low it can go. So I'm still talking now, playing guitar. So you can hear me talking and I'm a lot louder than the guitar. Probably even hear the strings behind. Okay, now let's go to the line out. I'll show you what these controls do. I'm running into a couple of IRs based on Marshall uh, Greenback 4x12s. Okay, so now I'm just using the tone stack. As you can see, that is all the way down. So none of the signal is coming out of here now. It's running into a DI, which is running into some Marshall IRs. Now, of course, this depends on what IRs you have and what you can run, but basically, 
I can get that 412 sound without having a 412. So we're still on the game channel on the exact same settings. <laughs> There's a lot of things on the market that can do this reactive load. One of the most popular ones is the two notes. Now that is just a load. It does have a 20 dB attenuator as well, but it basically is the load so you can use the DI at into your door and do what I'm doing right now. But this is just an added feature that this Weber has. Uh, so you can record simultaneously while you have, you know, you're using this for the room sound or you are marking a cab or live. Or you can do it for silent recording or playing at home. You know, when people are sleeping, you can just have your tube amp cranked up, getting some nice tones, but, you know, pretty much silent through headphones or just through monitors. So I'm going to show what these controls do. Uh, we'll dial in something a bit more crunch-like. So the moment I've got the tone bypassed, now I'll switch it on and we will lose volume and there'll be a change in tone, because as I said, it's a passive tone network, so it doesn't exactly work like an EQ you're used to. So this is now on. Basically, if your signal's too hot going into the DI or whatever, now I just recommend you use a DI with a pad, but if your sound guy needs you to turn it down, you have the volume control. Now this, this is the treble control, and this makes the biggest We'll go to the bass control, which also makes a huge difference. So it seems to give a mid mid range, upper mid peak. Now the middle control is the most subtle and barely does anything, and I'm guessing that's because. It relies on these two controls. We dial these both back. That's where it makes a bit more difference, but you do lose a lot of signal at this point. So usually I just leave them all the way out or turn the tone stack off. Now of course if you're not using a speaker sim you might have to adjust the treble and stuff but I recommend getting a speaker sim either an analog one or a IR. Now I'm going to go back to the clean channel and get this edge of clean. Because the problem I found using IRs with my Frenzel, which is now on the floor at the moment, so I can make room for this, is that they kind of 
you lose some of the dynamics and when you put pedals in, it gets a bit funny sounding. Now that is because of probably the line out design in that amp. So I'm gonna put the Weber to the test and put a big muff on and see how it handles it. So like I said, we're gonna keep in that kind of clean on the edge sound. <laughs> my big muff clone on and see how that handles it. So that has been the Weber Mouse. Now this is a very in-depth review. Um, so I'm gonna timestamp all the different things I did with it, uh, but it is better than most reviews would say. All the reviews talking about limiting and compression, I'm thinking they just drove their amps to the limit and they're not used to it, or they're not used to the difference of sound in the room. But let your ears decide, like I said, I've tried to edit this so that they sound the same volume when they're coming back through your speakers, despite being completely different volumes in here. And you can really hear how the Weber interacts with the speaker and interacts with the amp. And of course, the DI sounds are pretty much gonna be set the same volume too. Um, I will not change it where we changed where we went down, uh, as you would have heard. So that kind of shows how much signal loss you have there, but obviously you can compensate on the other end. So thanks for watching again. Look out for more videos. I'm gonna do some kind of videos exploring different things with the attenuator in kind of shorter clips. Basically, your kind of arguments like clean versus uh, crunch with fuzz pedals and that kind of thing. So look out for those videos too and don't forget to like and subscribe for any of my videos. I should have a fair few out this coming weeks. Um, pedal reviews, like I said, more attenuated videos, all kinds of things. So check them out and thanks for watching.